Hey guys, my name is Ben and welcome back to episode 13 of your Bucket or Spigot plugin tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at the notorious creeper bomb from episode whatever it was. Um, and how to spawn entities, um, and how to register projectile hit events. Uh, which is what we're going to be looking at today. And that is me stretching because I'm tired. <laughs> so, the way that this is done, and that again is my Facebook, it's like the normal start a video everything beeps at me okay so the way that we do this is we have to use something called a, uh, a, a projectile hit event um, because we don't have a, a customer I currently don't have a package for projectile events and there's not that many of them so generally what I tend to do is I make a block inventory player and entity package and then I have an other package um, so I'm gonna make a dot other package and this is where anything else goes so if something to do with the weather or um, projectile hit event stuff like that so this uh, we're gonna make a class in here and we're gonna call this uh, projectile hit uh, like so and as always this will implement a listener listener like that uh, and down here we're gonna say at event handler and freaking I still have minecraft open let's close that so at event handler uh, public void on projectile hit and then in the parentheses projectile hit event uh, event e event event like so and input everything like so okay so um projectile hit event is is run when a projectile hits anything so that's an arrow a snowball an egg uh anything like that and you'll see um a list of them in a minute uh so there's a few checks we need to do first of all because this this could be from anything we want this to be uh from when a a snowball from my person has hit anything. It doesn't matter what. Uh, so first of all, we need to check what the entity that has been thrown is. So to do that, if we have event dot, you'll see we have this uh, list of all the things we can check here. So we want to get the entity, which is a projectile type. So we need to check uh, if entity, or if we just define it first. So entity or projectile, we'll call this projectile. Projectile p equals event dot get entity. Uh, and import projectile from org.bucket. So now we need to check the projectile's type. So if uh, p uh, dot get type is double equal sign ent equal ent uh, equal to entity type dot snowball like so. So we want to check if it's not equal to a snowball, then we can return out of this method because we don't care. We only want it if it's a snowball. We now need to check who the uh, the the shooter of this projectile is. And the way that we do that is we type p dot, and you see there's a method which is get shooter and that's a projectile source uh, so if we type if p dot get shooter uh, instance of player like so so if the shooter of the uh, if the snowball is an instance of player so if they're a player now if they're not so an exclamation mark at the front an instance of the player we can return and now we can make sure that this is a safe cast when we cast uh, the projectile shooter to player so we can now type player player equals p Dot get shooter. So we're getting the shooter of this projectile, and it's definitely a player because we've checked it here. Uh, and add cast like so. So player in brackets beforehand. Okay. So now with this uh, player object, we can check who the player is. So I just want it to be me. So if player dot get name dot equals ignore case uh, bench cubed like so. Now again, if it's not this player, actually you know what? We're gonna do it with a permission. So if and we can add this into it. So if player dot uh, dot has permission, like so, and you can do permissions in two ways. Um, I'm just going to do the string way. So if a player has a permission, uh, we can put it in a string like so. So I could say um, uh, the BC Bros dot snowball. So that would be my permission. If they have that permission, then they are, you know, they they can do this. Um, or what you can do is you can actually use the permission object. So new permission. Uh, permission and then here you can do lots of things with it and I recommend having a read up on this um, and uh, the string you just put it in here so uh, the BC bros dot snowball I'm gonna use the first one um, generally you use that new snowball that new uh, permission thing if you're defining your own custom permissions um, so if they have permission uh, the BC bros dot snowball so you can make this whatever I'm going to have it because I'm an operator um, 
and also we can add an operator override. So the way you type um, or, so if the player has permission or they are something else, is we use the two double lines on a UK keyboard. It is to the left of a Z. Uh, I'm not sure what it is on other things. So if the player has this permission or player dot is op, uh, now we can add exclamation marks around this whole thing. Uh, so if the player has the permission snowball or the player is an OP, actually we don't need to, we're going to open this up. So if they have either one of these permissions, um, then we're going to run the creeper bomb. <laughs> so uh, the projectile has hit the ground. Uh, you know, the creepers are inside of this snowball. They want to they get out of here. Um, they want to get out the snowball. They want to explode everywhere. So we need to spawn some creepers. And to do that, we need to get the location of the spawn. So location uh, L equals event dot get. Actually, we can do P. Uh, so the location where they're going to explode, which we're going to import from org.bucket, is, is from P uh, dot get location. That's getting the location where they're going to spawn. We also need to get the world that they're in. Uh, so that can be done with world. World equals location dot get uh, world, like so. And import that from org.bucket, not net.minecraft. Don't do what I just did. So now we can type world dot spawn entity at the location L entity type dot creeper, like so. Uh, now we want to actually make lots of these, so we're going to do a for loop, and we've done for loops before. If you don't know what they are, then I recommend looking them up. We're going to type for int i equals zero. Whilst i is less than 10, let's say we want 10 creepers to spawn. Uh, then we're going to increment i by 1 each time. So now we're going to put braces around this thing here and we're going to actually define this uh, spawn as a creeper because this method returns uh, I don't know if I can see I can't see but if I just do spawn and spawn uh, entity you see it returns an entity type um, so I can type uh, creeper uh, c equals and then this, and then we can import creeper, and we can actually safe cast this to creeper because we are definitely spawning a creeper. Uh, now we can say c dot set. I think it's set charged or set powered. Yep, yeah, set powered uh, to true, because this is going to set the creeper to be a super creeper. And uh, there we go. So basically, what's happening here is when the projectile hits the ground, we're going to get the projectile, and we're checking if the projectile is not a snowball. If the projectile is not a snowball, we're cancelling out this method because we only want it if it's a snowball. We're then checking to see if the shooter of this projectile is a player, and if it's not, we're going to cancel out again. Because it could be an eye, like a snow golem or whatever, and that'd be pretty ridiculous. That'd be like mega security there. Get your snow golems, <laughs> and they, they'll shoot creepers out. Um, uh, so, then we're going to get the player who's uh, you know shot the snowball, and it's definitely a player. And if they have a permission in the BC Bros. Snowball, or the player is an operator, uh, then we're going to uh, get the location of the snowball and the world of the snowball from the location of the snowball and we're going to spawn 10 creepers and we're going to power them like so. Uh, I also think we need to register this permission if we're going to um, do that. So if we go into our main class then we're going to make another method uh, which I know some people hate but I'm going to do it. You don't have to do it like this so we're going to say register commands no register permissions like so and down here, we're going to make a, uh, I don't know why these are public. I think these should probably be private, like so. Uh, I'm going to make a private uh, void regis register permissions, like so. And the permission that we want here is the, uh, the VC Bros. Snowball. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to, I believe, first of all, make permission. So permission P, P equals a uh, new permission like so and then we're going to type the permission name so uh, the BC bros dot snowball there are other things you can add into this so you can add um, like different like children of the children of the uh, like father permission and all this other stuff but I recommend just looking it up so the BC bros dot snowball um, do, 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 do. And now we need to get the uh, the plugin manager. So this is what we do up here when we register register stuff here. So if we just type this at the top, so plugin manager pm equals get server dot get plugin manager, and now we can say pm dot add permission 
and then P. So we've now added and we've registered this permission uh, uh, like so. So we've registered the permission and all is well in the world and we've done this method up here. So now uh, what you could do is we could make a list of all our permissions but we're not going to do that. <laughs> so I don't know why I suggested it. So anyway, I'm going to export this and I'll see you in the Okay, so I'm in the server. I'm going to give myself a snowball or a stack of them. And I'm going to just set the time to zero. Uh, okay, so now what we should find is that when I fire uh, the snowball, that lots of creepers spawn. I'm not sure why it lightninged then. I must have some other plugin installed. Uh, let me just check. I think I have. Yeah, I have a. That's like the one that was in before. So let's just quickly restart the server here. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back in, and I need to give myself snowballs again for some reason. Uh, okay, so now if I fire my snowball, then what we should find is that nothing happens. And that is because we didn't register our event. I always do this, <laughs> and everyone probably notices this before me. I'm a bad person. So uh, in our register events, we need to do pm.register events and projectile hit. Uh, there we go. That's going to register our event. And I'm sure that everyone else did that before me and noticed that and is like screaming at their computer, like, register the command. So I've reloaded, fire the snowball, and a bomb of creepers have spawned. <laughs> like so. Uh, now, if you want to add the whole lightning effect thing, uh, which, which kind of does kill them, um, then I guess what we can do is we can go into our projectile hit thing here and just before we spawn all the creepers we're going to say world dot uh, strike lightning at the location L and all that's gonna do is it's gonna strike lightning I'm not sure if there's a way uh, there we go so strike lightning effect at L so what this will do is it will strike the lightning and it will make the effect um, but I don't think it's actually going to harm any of the creepers. So if we just export that there, reload, uh, and fire the snowball, you see we get the lightning effect, and all the creepers spawn, and they all, you know, happen. Uh, but none of the creepers are actually harmed. And they're all supercharged, and we have mega creeper mega -ness. <laughs> This looks absolutely ridiculous. They're like spawning on top of each other as they come out. <laughs> Mad frame rate. Okay. Right. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you can somehow make use of this. I'm sure this could make a crazy snow golem protection system. Because uh, you could check if the shooter was, say, a snow golem. And only do it when they did it. Uh, maybe only a certain snow golem. <laughs> But I really recommend, again, I say this at the end of Edge but I really recommend just having a fiddle around with this kind of stuff, playing about with it, having a bit of fun, uh, making this kind of stuff. <laughs> um, and, you know, stop troll commenting in my videos with stuff about freaking becoming, like, challenger programmers and whatnot. Thanks for that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next.